this is what it sounds like when Dave's crying. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. Welcome to On The Lamb podcast. We are a couple sisters from Ontario, Canada, chatting about yarning and knitting and pattern design and making fun things. I'm Timu. I'm the lady. And welcome or welcome back, whatever the case may be. I always feel like, I feel like now going, doing every other week, because we're, I think it was last week we were talking about how we're going to do every other week over the summer. It makes it feel like every time is like the first time again. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I don't like that every other week. Yeah. Having a week off in between feels like forever. And then I'm like, what am I talking about? I don't know. What do I say? I was Keeps trying exciting. To... <laughs> Something like that. I was trying to check out some like new podcasts yesterday and um, Steve, my husband, came into the kitchen as I was watching one and it was like the person's first or second episode and it's just them by themselves, which I feel like when it's just you by yourself, it's so much harder because you have to keep yourself on track and you have to like, you know, not be distracted and stuff. And the person was like really distracted by like whatever was going on, something going on in the background and like all these different things. And Steve's like, maybe you hear this differently than I do. He's like, but I'm like, I don't think I could watch this. He's like, cause all I'm thinking about is like how distracted that person is. And I was yeah. like, I'm like, I try to take into a grain of salt. Cause he was like, Thing, like because I said something about how well it's the person's like second episode so just like you know I try to take that into account when I'm watching someone like regardless of where you are now the first or second episode is always a bit rough um or rougher than than you ideally end up and he's like well you're in the ladies like episode sport wouldn't be like that like you would come with a plan and la, la 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 and I was like yeah but I also like try to take into account that well we used to come with like a little bit of like notes yeah I do actually now that we're doing that every two weeks especially I make myself notes but I just realized oh yeah I left my notes <laughs> profesh yeah totes profesh totes profesh <laughs> and that says it all people say that like I'm totes profesh I'm like yes <laughs> yes exactly <laughs> we think of them like oh Ninjago movie and they're like, he's like, I can handle garment on. They're like, are you sure that's a good idea? He's like, yeah, I got this. Some totes profesh. And they're like, what does that mean? And then I think it's like the robot guy is like, I think he's trying to say he's a total professional. <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh, that part cracked me up. Anyways. Um, yeah, Steve's like, oh, you guys would come with like a plan and notes and la 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 la. And I was like, yeah, but I also try to like take into account that at least I have like a different amount of experience than some people might with one being a talking head on camera because of like the work that I do with salsa babies. I've made lots of videos where I'm just videotaping myself talking about something and talking to the camera as if it's another person. Um, and then plus like with work, I facilitated tons of workshops and, you know, had to like do different levels of public speaking. So it's like, I just think of this in the same way. It's like, I don't have to like, whereas I think like sometimes <laughs> maybe when people first start doing this for the very first time, they think, Oh, I'm just going to like jump on camera and talk about my knitting and don't realize like how challenging it can be to just be the talking head. Like it's like having a conversation where the other person never reciprocates. So yeah. it is much easier to like get distracted and get off topic and go off on a tangent and, like even videos that I've done again for my other work for salsa babies, there are totally videos where I have to take like seven takes because I cannot, like I get so like, I'm like, I'm on topic, but I get so into my tangent that I'm like, I don't even know what I'm even saying anymore. Like I have to stop it and be like, I need to just start from the beginning. Cause I can't even save that at this point. <laughs> like, anyways. So yes. Keeping on topic um what are you nice mug i realized um i don't know why it like occurred to me at some point later on and nice sleeve by the way um <laughs> totes for fish um, <laughs> um yeah i realized like i never get my mug like this yeah like just 
reaching for my back, taking a sip of candy. Um, yeah, we never talked about your birthday goodies. Yeah, because I don't think we podcasted after that. No, yeah, I know. Actually, it's funny because I did actually bring up a bunch of stuff today mm-hmm. to talk about my birthday goodies, like really quick. You already mentioned one of them. Which I got, like, yeah, I got more than I even realized. I just realized I bought one of the other bags too. Um, okay, what are you wearing? I'm wearing uh, winter surf. Nope. I just, there's like so many of uh, Annie's patterns that I have now. Yeah. Winter That's surf. You call them all winter surf. <laughs> I know. What's winter surf? It's the navy sweater. Oh, yeah, I do call them all winter there's surf. There's nothing wintry. Surf, maybe, but there's nothing wintry about a tank top. That's why. Well, like, I always think, like, that. it is a weird name for it. Uh, do I, I don't think I actually remember the name ever. Like, I don't think this is the one that was like, no, I haven't committed that to memory ever. So, is it Soul Sister, or? Do you want me to look it up? I don't know. It's an Annie Lupton. If you don't know her, I'm sure if you watch this podcast regularly, well, you know her by now, because you don't, never stop talking about her. <laughs> yeah, like, I have, like, a, a limited number of, like, pattern design obsessions or like people that I just am like a little bit of a stalker with and Annie is one of them I don't know why well I know why it's because I love her patterns but (laughs) and because I test for her quite regularly but yeah yes probably gets mentioned at least once every episode either we're showing a pattern or showing a test knit or something and this time this one it's like three times because you're knitting one I'm knitting one Andrew wearing one Annie we love you we love you (laughs) just wish Uh, you were yeah, I can't remember what the tank's called, but go on my Ravelry. It's in my project pages. It was a test that I did for her a while ago. Um, and you can see all my notes there. I was going to go into like, oh, how I modified it and la, la, la. Just my notes are all there. And we've talked about it before. Yeah. I, what are you wearing? I, thanks for asking, am wearing my um, Maple Buds top. So it's the test knit that I did for... Natalie, whose last name I can't remember, who's Redhead Nata on uh, Instagram. And I think she has, I'm pretty sure, like 90% sure, she has a podcast with Jenny F of Sweater Freak Knits. So it seems like only a natural transition that my other designer obsession, I would then start testing for her friend. Um, so it was, yeah, test knit that I did. The I'm like so proud of myself that I'm done before the due date. That like never happens. So the end date for this is the first week of July and I blocked it and everything. I only haven't, I haven't woven it in, but. You also yeah. finished the Melissa K design early. Mm, it was only like a day early or a day oh, or two. With this one then. It was due on the 15th. The end date for that was the 15th. And I but think I was one. like, what? Go ahead. Keep going. I keep interrupting. You. Um, the due date for this was like first week of July. So I'm like a week ahead as opposed to like two days ahead, but it's actually blocked and everything. So it's and like, woven in. no, yep. and just saw it. <laughs> that doesn't happen until I actually like it almost sometimes I do it, but most of the time. One, I block first before I weave it ends. I just find I like it better because sometimes if you weave it ends a little bit too tight and then you block it, sometimes it, you can get like weird pulls that you have to like spend a lot of time adjusting. So that's my one I'm thing. And people talking about that and feeling the same way. Yeah. I feel like yeah. And it's funny because it was one of those things I just started doing. I didn't really necessarily think that hard about it it just was like oh, i'm just gonna block this i don't feel like weaving it ends and then in the end i was like oh this actually makes sense um someone's trying to enter someone? just got him though what oh rue was trying to enter no no clark oh first i thought you said mo and then i was all confused so it's knit out of me, a linen blend and i know i can't think of what it's blended with linen and silk i thought you said that's what I was going to say, but for some reason I kept second guessing that. So uh, yeah, it's a linen and silk blend by Kitchen Yarns in the birch and stick colorway. So you can see it's, hopefully you can kind of, camera's picking it up okay. It's kind of like this beigey, tanny kind of color with brown and black, like little blips in it. Like a really nice like, chocolatey brown. Um, and what I, one thing I really liked about the pattern, so one, it's like one of the, I haven't worked lace in a while. I think the last time I worked lace was a test knit last summer that was a freaking nightmare the the lace pattern was fine i just kept trying to not pay as close attention as i should have paid i didn't want to put in lifelines so i kept making mistakes and then having a really hard time going back and then i kind of avoided like 
doing intricate lace for a while because <laughs> that was like a 24 row repeat because it was actually like 12 rows and it would like shift. Anyways, so I haven't really done a whole lot of lace knitting in a while, but this one I found, it was like not super, I don't want to say intuitive is the right word, but you could get into a bit of a rhythm with it because it was kind of like a simple shifting, even though it looks a little bit more intricate, just the way that it shifted kind of made sense after a while. And then the way the increases went in made sense. And it's just really pretty without being like too complicated and not super fussy to knit. And then another thing that I really liked was um, variations in the pattern. So two sleeve options, either the ruffle, which I obviously did, or you could just do like a straight edge and end with um, your I cord. And then same for the bottom. So originally I was going to do a straight sleeve and a ruffled bottom. And then everybody else in the test group was doing that <laughs> was a straight sleeve and a ruffled bottom. So I was like, well, to be a nice tester, I'll do a ruffled sleeve and a straight bottom. Cause I figured worst case scenario, if I do it that way and I don't love it, I can just switch it after the fact. But so at least it got tested. But I think this looks way better like for my body. Um, because at first I hadn't realized how much positive ease the body was going to have. And I, I've worn tops before, like a peplum kind of top where it comes down and then it has like quite a big ruffle at the bottom. Um, and I think that looks really cute on my body, but with so much positive ease, I feel like a ruffle would have just ended up looking like a little kid dress that's way too short for me or something. Like I, I think I would have had a hard time figuring out what to wear it with. Whereas this, the only other, another one, the other thing that I did is I stopped a little short of what the pattern called for. Oh, actually two more things. I stopped a little short of what the pattern called for because I figured for my body and hopefully I can get a picture of it um, next weekend when I am hoping to wear it to a family barbecue. I want to wear it over a maxi dress so it has the appearance of being kind of like two pieces like a high-waisted skirt with a crop top over top. We'll see how that looks with the dresses that I own. Um, and then the only other thing I did which wasn't an intentional modification it was just a mistake that turned out okay. Um, there's a little bit, uh, just a wee little bit of body shaping and I moved it to the sides under the underarms rather than in the middle of the front and the middle of the back, which I'm kind of happy about because I feel like if I could see those increases, I wouldn't be so happy about that. But it was totally a mistake. I just accidentally moved to the beginning of the round because I'm used to patterns where after you, you go in the round, after you take separate for the sleeves, you shift the beginning of the round to the underarm. And I just feel like any pattern that I've done, like a sweater in the round, that's always happened. So I think I didn't think about what the notes said. I just did it kind of automatically. And then later on was like, what? This increase thing is not making sense. And then she's like, oh, because your beginning of the round should be still in the middle back. I was like, oh, yeah, no. <laughs> Anyways, so it worked out. And I think it's really cute. So, ta-da! Maple, yeah. bud, maple Bud's top, I think... It's due out sometime in July. So take a look. And I only used one skein of yarn. So I definitely could have gone longer. I didn't, me I haven't measured my leftovers yet, but I have like a good size nugget because um, it is lace weight yarn. Um, I definitely don't think I'll be knitting like a lace weight top again in the near future. It was like, especially as these rows got longer because the body again is quite wide. Oh my gosh. Stockinette on lace weight with so many stitches. I was like, the rows will never end. <laughs> which was another slightly motivating reason to not make it any longer in the body than it absolutely needed to be. <laughs> and I imagine you have to, you have to pay, like not pay attention, but look at your, cause I'm just like, as I'm doing this sock too, with just a sock weight. And I think this is 2.25 needles. I'm like, it's hard to look away depending on your, well, I'm also a bit tighter. So <laughs> um, sure it was so bad, but yeah, it just kind of depended. I just found like it was hard to get into a good rhythm. I really had to like bunch the stitches up on the left in order to be able to like get even close to what my normal just knitting speed would be. Um, and I just found that because it's kind of like a, I don't know if you'd actually call it a two ply, but you can see that there are two plies that make up the strand. It was easy to split. So um, yeah, it, it was a little tricky to get my normal like sort of pace going. I, lo I love this yarn. I think it feels so gorgeous on my skin. Like it's so soft and so mm -hmm. smooth. Um, and I think it'll wear really nicely and stuff, but 
Yeah, I think my only complaint too is working with it. And I don't know, I'm assuming it's going to be like this for a while while I wear it. It sheds. Mm -hmm. I don't know what we were talking about. And I meant to tell you, or I said, I'll mention that to you later, winding it, like even what, like there were little teeny fibers, like all in the air. You can see them on my pants just from wearing this for a short time. And every time I knit on it, I would have to like, <laughs> cause I would like, work on it in the afternoon for a little bit before going to pick up my kids from school. And then as I'm driving to school, I always have like a little mini sticky lint roller in my center console, just, just in case. And it would be like every single day I'd be like lint rolling the top of my lap. Cause like people are going to think I was like attacking a Muppet or something like my legs. Cause I often wear like dark pants. So I'm like, my legs are all furry. Anyways. So, and I don't know if that's the linen or the silk or both, but fibers everywhere. Anyways, what are you working on? My Wonder Woman socks. You say that with so much happiness and enthusiasm. No, it's, I mean, I don't care that much. It, it just getting, thinking about like what I'm going to bring camping. But this, this sock in particular was past my heel, mm -hmm. but it was just too tight. You know, and it was one of those situations where I was like, no, it'll be okay. No, it'd be okay. It'd be okay. But I was just like, no, it feels like a cast on my foot. Like it feels so like I could wear it, but it would just, it, yeah. the, it looked like it was a, um, one by one rib, how like pulled open it was. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like it had the obvious like ripple. Yeah. So I was like, no, I want to make sure that I could take care of these socks and want to wear them. So mm -hmm. went back to the toe and added four more stitches and I still may actually make it a, um, some kind of a ribbing two by one or yeah. four by one or something. I'm not sure yet. Anyways, I'm happy. Like it's nice yarn. Thankfully I, I'm motivated because I want to enjoy these, but it's just a bummer. That was, it was a lot of knitting that yeah. I went back. Yeah. yeah. You so notes on like how many stitches you make your, this is socks. the first pair of socks on 2.25s. Mm -hmm. So I will make a note now. The other thing is it also depends on the yarn. Like it's, yeah, it'll be great yeah. to make notes. Now I will um, update. I have a project page already started for it. So I'll, I'll go and update it today to say, well, I might, yeah, maybe I'll just update it. And then um, actually I like how some people like write themselves like little notes, like just a tiny little yeah. blurb in the notes section. I always thought it was like for other people, but I think it's like a, a journal for themselves. Not that I yeah. think of it. Well, cause like sometimes not everybody's good at paper notes. So that's one way to like, then next time you make socks, you could go to that project page and be like, oh, right, that's how many stitches I used, and that's what size needle I used, for sure. What was I going to say? I know, it's gone now. It's gone. It doesn't matter. Um, what are you working on? I am finishing off a dishcloth, because I realized that tomorrow is the last day of school, and I hadn't really thought about whether or not I was going to do end-of-year teacher gifts. Mm. Like it kind of popped into my head and then it kind of went out and I did something at Christmas. So I was like, well, I don't want to go too crazy for end of year. Nor do I really think that I should have to. I don't know. Maybe I'm, I feel like sometimes people feel like this pressure of like, well, everybody's doing it. So I have to do it or whatever. It's like somehow an expectation and I don't want to feel that way. Um, but I do like, I genuinely am appreciative to the teachers. So I just want like a little something saying like, thanks. Your, your job and you know, something that I wouldn't be able to do and whatever so I was kind of thinking like okay well what can I do so um yeah so I had a couple of dishcloths already made and then um thank goodness I had a couple dishcloths already made because otherwise I'd be rushing to try and make four dishcloths so these two were already done this one's crocheted and I can't remember, I think I was just playing around with different like crochet stitch patterns and was like, I'll just make some dish cloths so I can play around. I kind of like this one. It's interesting to look at. Um, and then this one, and I can't remember exactly what these yarns are. This is not Bernat. I think this one's a lily or something like that in like some kind of nautical themed colorway that they had. So those two, and then I'm finishing this one obviously joined in a separate color because it was only a partial of all using my kids <laughs> kids size knitting needles <laughs> are they oh cute <laughs> well because i was using these 
because I just keep like cheap plastic ones for when I'm teaching it so I can just like leave them in my bag rather than worrying about like oh do I have a circular that's available and la 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 and most of the time because if I'm teaching a class um I give them for like a dishcloth cl I, class I give them straight needles to use so I find if I'm using circulars that's a little bit confusing for people especially who are like very new and don't know what circular needles are so these were my teaching needles and I like them because they're kind of like a pearly white color I don't know where I got these ones um and then I went into my knitting bag and found this situation well done I don't they're just cheap needles but it's more principle of the matter than like I don't even know where the end went I would or I would have glued it back on but then this piece that's down the center like comes out oh. like, really I don't know if it's necessary if I need it I think without it they're really flexible so it's like center made of it's a piece of metal like it's like a metal dowel inside the plastic I, mean, I guess it's just to keep it less bendy or... anyways so yeah Right now, I'm trying to finish this dishcloth, and when I'm done that, then I'll work on another whip that I have. I only have a few stitches left. Um, and then I just need to make one more, and then that's my teacher's gifts. And I'm going to get Steve to pick up a, um, like, a Lickbo gift card or something like that. Probably. Lickbo or Timmy's, I don't know, which is better. What does LCBO stand for again? Liquor Control Board of Ontario. Yeah, okay. I was going to say, uh, for any other viewers that are not Ontarians. I can't remember if it was Canada or Ontario. Ontario. No, I don't know what it's even called in other places. Yeah. When I think of it? Yeah. I'm trying to picture that. Anyways. Like, there you um, have it. That's what it is. A, a, license, uh, a gift certificate for alcohol. Yes. Alcohol or... Because it's different in Canada. We don't... Well, it's changed a little bit, but... For years and years and years and years, you could really only buy alcohol, like hard liquor, coolers, stuff like that, either at an LCBO, so like it's like a government-run liquor-only store, or the beer store, which just has beer and beer variations. And then um, some stores, like grocery stores and stuff, would have like a wine kind of store, little, little shop. Um, and then just recently, they changed it, so now the certain grocery stores have a beer store in them so you can like which steve loves that if i send him for like milk on the way home he comes home with like a couple of cans of like fancy beer and i'm like seriously I'm like every time you go for milk it costs like 25 dollars because <laughs> you end up buying like because they have like you can buy cases of beer but also they have like the single cans of like more expensive stuff time <laughs> Um, Jason has said that as well. He's like, it's too convenient. Yeah. <laughs> you, wouldn't go, you wouldn't go to the beer store like that frequently. Yeah. Um, most of the time, like he'll just buy like a case of like something cheap, but then because he stops at the beer slash grocery store, he thinks that he, it's like sending your little kid to the store for milk and to think that they're allowed to use the change for candy every yeah, yeah, single yeah. time. Heard. <laughs> um, anyways. So, there you go. Fish cloth done. Nice. I like this one. It's cute. The colors, like, work well together, I feel like. Um, how do we get onto the LCBO? Oh, yeah. So, I got to figure out if I'm going to put... I was thinking I'll just, like, get him to get me a gift card, and then I'll kind of, like, wrap it up in the dish cloth to make it, like, a cute little package for tomorrow. Yeah. Um, what do you want to do next? FOs? Uh, sure. Since our last podcast, I cast something on and FO'd it. And then I frogged it. The whole thing. Well, I, yeah. I, I did cast it on. <laughs> cast it on, FO'd it, blocked it, frogged it. <laughs> the um, Erica Cow by Jane Richmond. Tried to yeah. use a worsted weight for a bulky project and it didn't work out. Well, it looked good. It, like, it looked really great. It was just like how I wanted it to sit on me. And when I looked at other project pages, some people's, depending on the yarn they use, and I guess their knitting gauge, like it was more, I'll probably insert a picture just so you can see. I'm going to knit it again uh, with better yarn, different yarn. Um, it's more like, you know, structured because it's bulky. 
Um, but some other people's, it's like it was more loose. And that's what mine was doing too, is like sitting down more here. And I was like, it probably will look attractive, but I still wanted it to be a little bit more structured. And I did try to knit, knit it with a smaller needle, but probably with worsted. I should have gone down more than just half a yeah. size. That's what I was going to ask is if you, um, if you, oh gosh, had adjusted your needle size or if you tried to knit it with like on the same size as well. I adjusted it and with um, just doing the ribbing part of it, like the gauge was, yeah, the gauge matched what her gauge was. Yeah. Which was That's good. It was more the lace part that I got to. Yeah. And I didn't, I was just like, oh, okay, if the, if the ribbing is fine, <laughs> I'm not going to measure the lace part. Um, but it wasn't great. It's not, I shouldn't say negative. It was beautiful. It just wasn't the structure that I wanted it to be. Yeah. It's the fabric was not how you wanted it. Yeah. So now the yarn that I used, which was Tannis Fibert's Driftwood on her, uh-oh, I can't remember which label it was now. Orange label? Orange? Yeah. Which was green cashmere. Green. Yeah. yeah. Um, probably will get used for what Tamu cast on an epode. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Is that what you're showing now? I can. Yes. Do it now. Right now. Picked up something. <laughs> um. Let's not get into a huge 20 minute tangent. <laughs> no, about... I was thinking that before and I was like, I feel like this should start with a disclaimer of like, this is not a political podcast <laughs> no. and in no way I'm very wanting to launch into any political debates. So, but I feel like I need to give like a, a, a gentle backstory. So gentle last backstory. Week, yeah. Gentle. So last week I suddenly had like an emotional meltdown because, and I said like initially I was like, Oh, why am I so emotional? And I think it was because we all know what's going on or what has been going on in the States. Um, and with the families and the kids and what have you. And I, I am a, as much as I am an Aquarian who doesn't necessarily show emotions, I am a very high feeler. I'm very, um, I don't know, I guess I, I guess I would sort of class myself, myself as an empath to a degree, but I'm just, I can be very good at turning it on and turning it off. And for a long time, I've kind of kept it a little bit more at bay just because like I have a life to live and I can't be debilitated by <laughs> feeling all the feels all the time. So whatever, i had been strictly avoiding looking at this situation. I'm not a super political person anyways. I try to kind of avoid the news because I am a high feeler. I find watching the news can be really stressful. Um, so I was just like avoiding my, my Facebook feed for sure. Cause I feel like I tried to go on and like every other post was something. Um, and even on Instagram, I was like fast scrolling past things that weren't like knitting related. Um, and then I was watching something completely unrelated to all of these things where someone was talking about missing their kids and I completely melted down. I was bawling my eyes out and just all the emotions came out at once. And so I, my husband was like asleep with the boys because of like putting them to bed. He always passes out. And I was like... <laughs> If there was like a hidden camera in my house, someone would have thought, oh, for sure she's losing it. Because I'm like hunting around my house, bawling my eyes out, like just uh, what I'm hunting for initially, I'm like, I don't even know. I was like, I need to do something. I was like, I need to like put this feeling into like action. And so I was like, what can I do? And I was like, you can take it into your hands, literally, because the only thing you can do right now is knit. So I hunted down some yarn and I dug through my desk for these needles, like these fixed circulars that I knew were buried under all this crap. And I cast it on and I was like, and what can you do? And I was like, I can just keep moving forward. So this is my moving forward project. I'm like, cause that's all I can do is just keep putting one foot in front of the other moving forward. So I basically just cast on like a simple cowl with this, I'll take it off, uh, inset um, kind of arrow, design just like a really simple I don't even know if you if you would call it like a lace or like a kind of like a rib lace combo looking thing it's super simple oh well it's very straightforward like it's the same two rows you're alternating and you just keep like shifting the pattern over by one yarn over section 
um, each time. And then when you get to a certain point, you start working it backwards and then you are done. And I, instead of doing a rib at the top and the bottom, I did like a seed stitch edge, I don't know, just to switch it up. And yeah, there's like no real shaping. I do have like a slight increase and decrease in mine only because trying to work out the pattern, the first two rows, I accidentally increased two stitches <laughs> after the rib. So then at the, at the end, I just did this, like I did the same mistake almost like in reverse just to decrease down those two stitches again, but it's really not necessary. Um, and that was it. It was like, I think it took me two days to knit it. Cause I just like, I was like, I need to put all my emotions into this. I poured my whole heart out <laughs> into this project. And then I was like done. And I actually, I like done. And I felt like this immense sense of relief. Like I was just like binding off was like sealing the, those feelings away and just like putting them to the side. And I think I picked the exact right yarn. So this is from Akara Yarns. I believe she's in Innisfil or Barry area, something like that. Well, Innisfil's near Barry, right? Um, she's somewhere in that area, or at least was when I purchased the yarn. Um, and this is her organic merino uh, worsted weight. Um, I think the colorway was just called navy. I believe I had bought three skeins of it. What did I use it for? Oh yeah, I used it for a, a Jenny F pattern. This like like another bandana cowley type thing. Um, but I had like two good size nuggets. I think I had a 65 gram nugget left and an 85 gram nugget left or something like that. So I used whatever I'm going to, I'm going to weigh the cowl itself rather than trying to figure it out from the leftover. Um, but I used like all of the 65 and then went into the 85 a little bit. So I'll just weigh the cowl and tell you guys that way what the yardage will be. Um, I want to make a second one and do like maybe double or triple the length so it's like you could double it over if you wanted and make it a little bit taller but um for now just to get the base pattern this is it and yeah i'm quite happy with it it's i love this yarn. It's so soft and i just it's like an easy throw on got it around your neck Ta -da. the end i don't know exactly what it's called i don't know if i gave it a name or not Cause I didn't even write down. I honestly, like, I was so like, I just need to knit it that I didn't even write any notes while I was knitting, which is like terrible design or practice, but it was just like, it was cathartic. It just needed, the emotions just needed to get out uninterrupted. So I just, that's what I did. Yeah. So on a more positive note, <laughs> one of the things I want to accomplish this weekend is getting this written. And then once it's written, my goal is to publish it, um, with the two variations, so a short version like this, and then maybe a longer version that you can uh, twist and wrap around. Either a longer version that you can twist and wrap or a wider version that you can pull down your shoulders. I haven't fully decided. Um, but get this written and then have the proceeds from this go to an organization whose name we'll put on the screen because my memory is terrible. I think it's called Together. I don't know. I found out that there is an organization that is led by or was started by Marie Forleo, Elizabeth Gilbert, and Brene Brown, three women who I absolutely adore and admire and just think the world of. And I was trying to figure out what like a good organization to put the proceeds from this towards who would help situations like the one that inspired this. Um, and they are, they are helping that situation uh, in terms of ad, like, supporting human rights organizations. So um, yeah, so that's where the proceeds of this will go. And I just can't think of what the name of the organization is off the top of my head. I'll plug it in for sure. Yeah. What were you going to say? Were you gonna Nothing. Say? I was going to ask the second name, but don't. I'll look it up after. Um, the author. <laughs> Eat, Eat, Pray, Pray, Pardon? The author of Eat, Pray, Love. And the what's her name? Elizabeth Gilbert. Okay. I just think is amazing. I, I liked Eat, Pray, Love, like the movie. I hadn't read the book. I liked Eat, Pray, Love as a movie. It wasn't, that's not really my movie genre. And then I listened to the audiobook of her Big Magic and I was like, I am, I think I have like a girl crush on Elizabeth Gilbert a little bit. <laughs> She's just so cool. Anyways. Yeah. Okay. I need to take this off. <clears throat> I'm wearing too many blue things and I'm starting to feel like, <gasps> um, I'll talk about another blue thing that I'm wearing when we do acquisitions. I couldn't, it crackled at that point. 
<laughs> oh, uh, and I was going to say, when you edit, you should put a little disclaimer at the beginning that we're having a little bit of technical issues. So if it sounds a bit crappy, mm -hmm. we're sorry. We tried to fix it as best we could. And this was, this was the best we could get. This is the best. What leaves <laughs> us? <laughs> it's not that great, but it's the best. Yeah. Um, I was just going to say, I have, uh, I have things to show in for acquisitions via an email. Anyways. Um, I, think I have an FO. Okay. It's well, I'm going to call it an FO because it's off the needles, but it's really not quite done. It's okay. as far as it's going to get for a little while, I'm sure. <laughs> My um, winter surf. Just <laughs> kidding. <laughs> for a second, I was like, what? <laughs> 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 this is um, Studio Slub by Annie Lupton of Boho Chic Fabric Company. Finally finished my sister Cal. Um, yeah, it's been done for like, it's been off the needles for almost a week, I think. And then I just blocked it yesterday. Mm -hmm. And who knows how long it will take to get to seeing it. I'm going to avoid that part for a little bit, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. um, anyway, so yeah, that's the back one, back panel. And I'm wearing the front panel. And I think it's going to be, I don't know, we'll have to see, I guess, when it's seamed up. I think it's going to be a little bit large for me, but we'll see. Yeah. The pooling like remains. Pardon? What? what? Um, I was going to say, like, large in, in that it's, like, larger than you were hoping it would be, or just that you have, like, a lot of positive ease and it's whatever? Uh, let's see once I, once I seam it up and have it on my body. I'm not really sure. Like now that I have it right here right now, I'm like, oh, that's, that's going to be okay. But when I had this part, especially the back, because uh, it's more of a scoop neck on the back, I was like, oh, it's not even going to stay on me, but I think the front will help to keep it in place. Yeah, for sure. Um, it's supposed yeah, to I was, thinking, I was thinking when it was flat, because I have knit one as well. I was thinking when it was flat, I was like, oh, this is going to fit super weird. But it fits great, like, once it's, I think, once it's seamed. And yours looks, like, visually, just looking at your front, it looks, like, about the same proportions to your body as mine is to my body. So. Right. I did the, I think, the second size. I think it's, I don't know if it's supposed to be medium, but, like, the bust would go to 50 centimeters. That's right. And yeah, when I had it blocked on the mats, I was like, Ooh. so I took off the shirt that I was wearing yesterday, which is like, has a lot of positive ease. Mm -hmm. It's like a nice summer shirt. Um, put it, laid it on the mat and I was like, Ooh, that's like, but I think you have to account for like the seaming and then they'll like round it and like pull it in a bit more. It probably will be like a really comfortable summer top yeah. to wear. Yeah. So that's it. That's my FO. Well, that's my FO that didn't get frogged. The one that made the cut. What else do you have? Uh, did I, I showed my Melissa primer test last time, right? Did I show that? Aren't you wearing it? I don't know. I can't remember. <laughs> two weeks, eh? Reasons why I should keep better notes now. Yeah, Again. Right. Um, I'm pretty sure I showed it. I'm just going to go to our last YouTube. I know we talked Maybe about either it. way, I'll just insert your Instagram picture. Yeah, that's fine. Oh, no, you, last week you wore your... Bolero. Oh, right. Okay. Hold on. I'll throw it on. I was saying next week, where you're over here for a reason. And then I was like, did I leave it sitting over here? Because I was going to weave in ends while I was. But I'm sure you would have shown. Oh, you were seaming it last time. Right. That was my podcast whip was seaming. There's no like discernible front or back, I don't think. <laughs> Except with throwing on. Eventually there will be, because if I wear it for a while, I'll get a nice pill ridge where my hair rubs on it, and then I'll... Oh, I was going to say, you'll know because it'll have, like, a roundness from your boobs or something. Yeah, maybe that, too. <laughs> Anyways, what ends are obviously not woven in still. Sometimes that doesn't happen until I'm ready to wear something, so... So this is it. It's I have a little bit more... I'm, like, super bloated. Time of the month. <laughs> um, Full moon, too. Yeah, it's a little bit more negative ease than I was thinking. I'm pretty sure it's supposed to be like a flowy top, but I also substituted yarn. So she had used, um, my necklace is making it look like I have a weird third nipple. Um, she had used a cotton blend or either 100% cotton or a cotton blend for hers. I used um, merino <laughs> silk from, well, it's merino cashmere silk on the front and back from Crooked Kitchen Yarns in her In the Gloaming colorway. It's a sport weight, it's so pretty. It's like, a, the camera's not doing it justice. It's like beigey with like areas of like gray and purple and a teensy bit of like an orangey kind of color, it's so pretty. Um, and then the side is merino silk 
from Skinny Dipping Yarns. I think last time I said it, I couldn't remember what it was called when I found the tag. This is Skinny Dipping Yarns. I think the colorway is called Ditto, and it's also a sport weight. And I would say it's like a gray purple color, like a gray glove kind of color. I need to like it's insert so the picture. Oh, gosh. Yeah. 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 Okay. <laughs> this is not, it's hard to like, yeah, do it on camera. You can't get a full body shot very well, but I love it. It's so pretty and um, it's so soft and Hopefully there will be a day where the weather is right for me to wear it. If I can't wear the other, depending because we'll be going to a barbecue next weekend at my mother-in-law's house, which is right on Lake Erie. And sometimes it's like, even if it's hot, it can be kind of cool there because they're literally right on the lake. So, um, like literally their house floats on the lake. Right. No, like <laughs> there's house and like backyard and then a break wall and then a little bit of stony beach and then the lake is right there. But I just mean that you are very, we're very affected by, like the the lake and how it changes the weather while you're there kind of changes the temperature and the feel of it so even if it's really hot there's generally always a kind of a breeze and a coolness so depending on how warm or cool it is next week and i'll wear one of my half those anyways i was quite proud of myself i got this done like two days before the deadline the only thing i'm not sure about is i don't know why there's no like neck band finishing i feel like this needs something yeah. around but this is like how it is because I even double checked because I was like, am I reading the pattern wrong? Am I missing something? And so I double checked like her picture and everybody else's FOs and no, this is how it is. But I almost feel like I should add, I don't know, like an I-cord or something. I don't know. Oh, I wouldn't have said I-cord. I don't know, something. I don't know what else you would add though, a rib or just like a crocheted edge or something. I don't know. Or I'll just leave it alone because Melissa Kremer probably knows what she do. <laughs> um, <laughs> Anyways, <clears throat> well, yeah. Melissa Kramer might know what she's doing, but some people have different preferences, you know? Yeah. I, yeah, I, don't, I think that, um, I don't know why, but I, all of a sudden I'm picturing if you put a ribbed edge, it might look like a sweater vest. Yeah. So I'd probably don't do that. No. An eye cord edge, just be kind of like a... Because there's a garter edge at the top of the, like, armpit panel. Like, okay. A garter edge, but there is a ribbed edge at the bottom. Because I always think, like, you kind of want edges to go together, right? And there is a ribbed edge at the bottom of the front okay. and back panel, so... I don't know. I say leave it. What? I say leave it. Leave it alone. Yeah. I'll leave it alone for now. Like worst case scenario, I think I overbought yarn for it because I was worried about yardage and running out because again, I was substituting. So I have like one full skein of that left plus like a little nugget, I believe. So worst, worst case scenario, I can weave in the ends, I can wear it. And if I decide down the road that it needs something, then I can always add it, right? Yeah. Nothing to say that you can't add well after the fact. Um, I think, yeah, that's it for me for FOs. Do you want to show a whip or something you're working on? Oh, I was going to say, do you want to show a whip or something you're working on? <laughs> it was funny because the way you said it, I was like, well, I did change my podcast whip. So I was thinking something I'm working on <laughs> hands versus something I'm like a whip that's in a project bag somewhere okay well what's your yeah what's your new project whip? podcast whip project whip um my new hold on let me get to the end of this row or else it's gonna be hard to hold it up so my new <laughs> podcast whip <laughs> what is going on with my brains right now my new podcast your brains? my brains um <laughs> my new podcast whip is part acquisition part new design and also work. Okay. So acquisition wise, I, um, Hello Stella, which is a, she's a Hamilton design, um, yarn dyer. I think her real name is Lindsay, if I'm not mistaken. I could be wrong. Um, she was celebrating her shop's like anniversary, birthday, I think just one year. And, um, yeah, had posted her anniversary colorway on Instagram. And I was like, oh, that's really cute. And I had never ordered anything from her. Yeah, her real name's Lindsay. So this is like not the card for the yarn that I got, but this is just her little business card. And yeah, so she had posted her anniversary colorway. And then also she had gotten Twilling Print to design her an anniversary pin, which I thought was so cute. Because that's exactly how I feel when the yarn mail arrives. Hello, beautiful. Um, so I had to grab one of those. Um, and 
yeah, so by the time I made it into her shop, all of her anniversary colorway was gone. But then I stumbled upon this. And I am so glad that I did because I'm obsessed with it. And the camera is so not going to do it justice. It's called Birthday Flamingo. And I wish I had, I think I, I took a couple pictures of it in a skein because I knew I was going to cast on with it like right away. Um, because it is like this color right here, which is like the main bright color that's in it. There's like a little bit more of a pocket right here, but you can, the camera is not doing it justice at all. It's blowing it out so bad. It's like my favorite neon color. It's like a neon pinky red color. So it's like not like a highlighter pink. It's like darker and more saturated than a highlighter pink. But then it's like those sections are like bled out throughout the yarn. So it's like even where it's kind of baby pink, it still has like an overall kind of neon glow. And then there's like sections where she's put in like darker speckles and I can't really, where they're like, just like muddy. It's like black and blue and green and like, it's such weird colors, but when you see them just like sprinkled throughout, I'm like, oh, I love it. Um, so originally, so I just got that one skein and then the pin. And originally I got it, to go with um, another, you know, it's kind of slightly better, but not great. I love, I always do this, like, as if this is going to help me. To see yeah, I know. I do that too, where I'm like, I get really close and I'm like, I can't, I don't know. <laughs> it doesn't make any difference because it's still just on the screen. Um, so originally I got it, so I, normally I don't love single ply. So it's single ply. I think it's just my nail. I'm going to this. Yeah, 100 percent super wash merino it's 115 grams 430 yards single ply fingering weight birthday flamingo um show us the card one more time <laughs> you like the card this one's the ball band oh okay just looks like the card, the card. Yeah. <laughs> um and then of course i have it in my flamingo bag um that mrs brown's bags yes and the the fabric you can buy on Spoonflower. I'm like, I need a dress out of that fabric someday. <laughs> or like a bedspread or something. Um, yeah, I normally don't love single ply yarn. I don't know what it is about it, but it just, I feel like it's only good for like the right project. And like a lot of things I knit are not the right project for single ply yarn. But I had this one that I had bought from yarn ink I think it's called love song and it's like a very like saturated kind of bright blue color um variegated but mostly blue with a little bit of white and then it has like the odd little gentle sprinkling of kind of like a purpley pinky color speckle so I originally thought I was going to do like a brioche scarf kind of thing together with this and this bright blue and I started knitting with them and I was like it looks like a carnival threw up like it's just like <laughs> the blue is too bright and the pink is too bright and the two were like they were fun in like a fun house little kitty kind of way that was like I was expecting it to be bright but I wasn't picturing it quite like that so I was just like no I can't do it I won't I can't knit this I won't wear it so I had to scrap that plan and then I've had this idea in my head for a while of like I want a cowl that's like kind of like a bandana cowl but with like a lot more extra fabric to it a lot more extra knit to it so that it has the appearance of a shawl that you've like whoops swooshed around and then it's just like on you because I'm like I love that look like when you see um you know a, a pattern on Ravelry and somebody like you know, they wrap the shawl around all nice and they take a picture. It looks so gorgeous. And even if I can get a shawl to actually stay like that for any amount of time, as soon as I move it, like some part of it will fall off or it'll shift or something gets tighter or whatever. And then it doesn't look as nice. And even when I pin it, like, cause I've tried a few different shawl pins here and there, not consistently. I probably just need to practice with them more, but it's like, I'll put a shawl pin on and then it's like the weight of the pin starts pulling this this way or it slips or it just doesn't work for me. So I'm like, wouldn't this be great if it like looks like you have your shawl wrapped around. So it's going to be kind of like this. And right now I'm starting to work on like another wedge that'll kind of come out and come down here. And then 
I'll join it in the round and basically like the top will be like a big cowl, but they'll have like a lot of extra, hopefully a lot of extra fabric. So it kind of is loose around your neck and sort of smooshes and stacks up. So it just has this appearance of like, it's been wrapped around, but it hasn't. And then for some reason, I was just really like, I need some brioche. I haven't brioche in a really long time. And it's not even like, I don't feel like it's like jumping on the bandwagon of brioche because I know there's so many like amazing patterns out there by Andrea Mowry and Stephen West and that are all brioche and gorgeous and I love them but I haven't really felt compelled to knit any of them. It's just like I just felt like I just needed like some simple brioche. So I have another whip where I started to brioche but then I was like no I feel like this needs brioche. So I have garter on the edge and then brioche through the middle and I forgot how easy one color brioche is. I think in my head I was like, oh, this is going to be like a bit painstaking because I haven't two color brioche in a while. And so when I had started with the blue, I was like, eh, it's a bit of a pain. But one color brioche is super easy. I forgot how easy. It's, it's almost like doing seed stitch or, sorry, like linen stitch. Like it's like knits and slips. It's not, it's not as difficult as I feel like I thought it was and as maybe I convinced myself it was when I first did it. So I feel like knits and slips, not to be confused with nip slips. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Oh Lord. <laughs> I have nothing to add to that. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> oh my goodness. Anyways. <laughs> so I am actually writing notes down now for this one and <laughs> I will probably have it. My feeling is I will definitely have it done by the time we podcast next. Cause I feel like I'm going to need to bring this with me, even though I don't feel like I should knit it in the campsite. It might be one of my car knitting only projects. That's the thing about going camping is every year we go camping. I feel like knit planning gets even more complicated. And this year I'm doing a lot more, I think last year I did bring a design with me, but it was something that was in a stage of just make on it kind of thing. Um, I feel like I have to really like think hard about what I want to bring with me this year because like, do I bring a design where I have to make lots of notes? Cause that's not always possible. Or do I bring, you know, something with like yarn that's kind of pricey because I don't necessarily want that to get dirty. I feel like I have to put a lot of thought into what I bring with me this year. So I have some ideas. Liz, so that's what I'm podcast whipping on now. I changed my podcast whip as well. Just because I realized my numbers, now that I added more stitches to my socks, the numbers are different and I'll have to decide what I'm going to do with the ribbing. The ribbing doesn't work out like the math isn't clean, you know? So I don't know what I'm going to do. Are Anyhow. All the way around or just on the top? Well, on the top of the foot, but when I get to the leg of it, and I also, it's going to be like just a tube. So I don't know. I might end up just uh, stuck in it, but I have to decide. I have to think about it and I don't want to think about it right now. Anyway, so I switched to adventures on the wrong side. Nothing to say because I talk about it every week, except that this year. Oh yeah, except I do. This is Lolo did it. And I, since the last podcast, I figured out what all the color words the color words are called. <laughs> um, okay. So, and in terms of the colors of the speckly ones that came in this pack, I don't know what the solid is called and there's another solid I'm going to use, but here we go with the names of the solid is great. Oh, okay. Well, I was in the tonals section. Um, so this first one, I don't think it's going to show up well at all with this weird light. It's rainy out today and I've got just this weird, uh, light bulb in the room. This, the first one anyway, is called Kiss Wookie. Can you see it at all? It's got the highlighter, highlighter yellow and the bright, I don't know, tealy kind of blue and neon pink and stuff and black pops as well. Um, then the second one. The colorways go to Lolo's website because her pictures are usually. Yeah, sorry, I made a mistake already. Sorry, the first one. I was like, that doesn't make sense. Why would this be called Kiss Wookie? No, the first one is called Wake Me Up. Mm -hmm. 
The second one is Kiss Wookie, and that's like it's got pinks and browns. That makes sense, Kiss Wookie. Yeah. Um, the third one is Raspberry Beret, which we knew that from the start. Mm-hmm. The fourth it. one is when da- I'm. So the fourth one, I'm not sure for sure. It, I think that like it's. I'm pretty sure with this one, you couldn't actually find. Like, I couldn't find it on her website anymore. It's like she's not making it or something anymore. I don't know. Anyways. I think it's a of retired colorways, if you. Oh, is there? Okay. I think you had said that this was Steel Magnolias. We're just going on pictures. I think Steel Magnolias, Steel Magnolias is actually what I'm using for the bind off. Pretty okay. sure this is called When Dave's Cry. Doves? Not Dave's. Oh, it looks like an A. <laughs> No, if you look at this, I'll have to go on. Maybe that's why I couldn't find it. Because I was writing in when Dave's cry. I'm going to put this up to the screen. It looks like an A. Uh, look at that. Yeah, you're right. It totally does look like I was a like, cry. what a weird name. <laughs> <laughs> this is what it sounds like when Dave's cry. <laughs> <laughs> I was picturing this like group of Daves like, just sobbing. Yeah. That's what I'm picturing. Like, what a weird name. And like, now that I'm like, oh yeah, when doves cry, it makes so much more sense. Like, it's got the gray, the dove gray. I still don't totally know why. You, oh, I guess the purple for like prints and stuff. What? Is that his song, When Doves Cry? Yeah. Yeah, right. So, I don't know, purple for prints? I don't know. I don't know in the gray I'm like maybe that I'm trying to like try to like make sense of colorways <clears throat> you know when you like look at them mm-hmm. anyway um I don't know if it is that song I don't I honestly have no idea if that song is on like the purple rain album maybe that might make sense. so funny okay oh. anyway when doves cry that's not my fault though it looks like a perfect little a there it does look like an a it wasn't yeah. even like an o that's too close to the v and it got no. jumbled it like it does look like an a they did it to, to uh mess somebody up <laughs> like <laughs> mess you up um oh and then there are other ones i think were a bit more obvious like this i can't remember what the order is now i have a picture of it oh i deleted it mm. I think I'll remember them. Without, like, uploading them onto your computer or anything? Oh, you know what? I think it is uploaded to my computer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. That would be, like, annoying to go try to find it because there were a lot of pictures I just took off my phone. Um, And I think, anyway, after the – I have, like, a next – the next section. So I got, like, yeah, obviously this – what was it called again? Grape? Grape. And then I'm going to do, like, a section of eyelets with, like, four teeny tiny – little nugs and then that like minty color will be next is that lolo as well yeah it's um i think it's mint julep yeah i'm pretty sure it's mint julep that'll be next and then i think after that i was like okay i'm gonna see what that first section looks like and then i might play with the order so anyways this is heisenberg this blue one that was easy this yellow one which i'm still pretty sure i won't use at all is burrow I don't think you can even tell the color. My, the color won't show up that well. Um, that one's the burrows, right? Yeah, what did I just say? I don't know. I think I said it at the same time you did. Oh, okay, the burrow, yeah. Green and orange. This is Welcome to the Jungle. I feel like if you could see it well, you'd be like, yeah, that makes sense. Because there's like, it's gray, but it's got like bright greens and bright orangey and yeah. tealy and stuff. Um what was the other one? Oh yeah and then this is steel magnolias i'm pretty sure just looking because this one the when when dave's cry has a lot more purple and pink in it but when you look at the website the steel magnolias is just like pretty simple like mostly gray and white with like just little bits of purple here and there i'm pretty sure i'll have to look at the website again with the right name for when doves cry (coughs) and see what it looks like I'm just picturing the search, <laughs> the search thing when you like type in. It like, actually came up like what? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. That's what I'm like you put in when Dave's crying. It's like yeah, that's not a colorway. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a colorway ever. Anytime. Thing. If I was a yarn dyer, I would totally. 
Right, so that's, yeah, that's my new podcast whip. I don't think I've done that much more on it since last time, except identifying the names. Um, I think the grape stripe was new. I think the last time you had said something about adding on fourth color or adding on an extra color and it was like the gray was so small you couldn't see it at that point or something like that. Oh, okay. Okay. So then I have done some more. It's not my main focus. I've actually been knitting pretty good again and uh, doing other things though. Mm -hmm. she she went... oh, my gosh. Talking is just is so difficult some days, you know? <laughs> Such a basic skill, but it's so hard. Um, <laughs> what do you want to show next? Um, I'll show my other kind of main... I have like two more whips. One's like a main one. One's, well, I'll mention if I talk about camping stuff. Oh, I don't see um, So, again, mentioned at the beginning how we're going to talk about Annie from Boho Chic. So this is my test knit for Annie. Oh, that's pretty. Mm -hmm. Super pretty. Colors. I love it. I'm not sure I love knitting it. Because <laughs> um, there's so much paying attention involved. <laughs> to make sure all the, obviously, the increases and decreases line up for the chevroni kind of shape. This is the one where just the gray section is the mohair, right? Yeah. Yes. So... This is that Rain City Knits. I would shown the colorways last time, um, but since I've actually cast it on. So the purple is a Rain City Knits. Um, I don't think she's currently dyeing. Her colorways were beautiful, though. Um, it was like a mistake skein that I had ordered from her through her posting it on Instagram. So I don't, it doesn't have a name, um, but it's quite obviously like a nice lavendery bright purple with like a little bit of like a pinkiness where like color almost breaks or kind of variegated um this whitey kind of color which is actually like a white with like purple not white white but like a cream with like purpley speckles in it is um what's it called it's gone uh it's by tattooed knitters she's tattooed knitters on instagram her brand is punk rock unicorn and the tag oh, yeah. oh. um i think i said it last week whatever it's called something with purpley speckles in it lavender love i think it's called and then this mohair stripe it lo it reads gray but it's actually like a slightly purple gray um is stranded dye works in her shiner colorway on her whole hair base. So the other two are fingering and then that's obviously a lace fate, but it makes like a really interesting pattern. It's kind of nice like switching the colors every so often. It just breaks it up a little bit, but yeah, two eyelet sections and then the chevroniness of it. It's like, it's hard to really get like a speed going with it because I'm either counting stitches to make sure that things line up or paying attention to yarn overs and decreases for the lacy parts so it's not a speedy knit that's for sure but it will be a gorgeous wrap when it's done mm, for sure uh, i guess my next whip i kind of am moving into like camping knits because i was thinking about bringing this camping hopefully finish it camping i um at the blue jays game cast it on with my uh canada 150 yarn that i had bought from um blue brick last year so she had come out with this colorway where it's, you can see it kind of goes of in a gradient from red to white and back to red um i think i bought two so i bought like her matching sock ones where you get two matching skeins um to make socks and then i think i also got the matching dk weight or something i think um Anyways, so I cast it on at the Blue Jays game. Um, as you can see, I didn't, I, I kind of did like toe up, but I didn't actually do a toe. And my thinking is of making these like kind of camping socks. So I think what I'm going to do is like a weird, like, <laughs> yeah, I can hear a bird sound because it's, I have my window open too. So I could hear there's a bird making like a similar ish sound. At first, I just thought it was a bird and I was like, it got really loud all of a sudden. Um, so yeah, so what I think I'm going to do with the toe is kind of separate the big toe from the other toes so I can wear it with my like flip-flop crocs. <laughs> um, and I'm using 
this white, just like, I think this was that opal yarn or the Regia yarn or something that you had gotten on sale and we split the, Regia. yeah. So I'm brioching the leg. Um, and then I know I did a flegal heel and then I think I'm going to go back and use the white for the toe, but I'll see how long the leg gets. If the leg gets quite long, I might use the red. Of the skin. Bless you. I might go back and use the red from the end of the cake and put it for the toe. We'll see. But either way, that's my one camping project kind of started. And then do you have other whips? One more. Shot. Whoop. Sure. Um, my most exciting. Oh yeah. Nice. The color looks horrid. I hope it, it shows up a little nicer than uh there's no sunshine today again. It's just so gray and I feel like that's like the color reflects the day. Yeah. Um this is my Wonder Woman shawl. I feel like it's pretty obvious if you have been keeping up with well, it's not like it's super uh, being chatted about right now, but I mean, it was a, a buzz for a little bit, I think, the Wonder Woman show, Wonder Woman wrap. Um, and just to clarify, because Tam and I were talking about like the pattern, Tam had bought this yarn for me. She was going to knit it for me. Got side burnered for <laughs> a year or more, year and a half, two years. I don't even know how long. Um, and... Uh, yeah, so Shatem was going to give me the pattern. Actually, you did pass it on to me, but then I looked it up, and it's free anyway. Yeah, yeah. It's a free pattern, so. I wonder if it was free forever, if it had just been free for a while when it first came out. Yeah. So, and it's neat to look at the project pages. People have, like, not just knit it in these colors, but mm. the first one on the page was, like, Wonder Woman colors that, like, I feel like go with the coloring of, the current mo the new movie that came out you know she's not wearing the bright red and gold yeah. it's like muted gold and like a burgundy kind of so that's that first one was so i was like oh that's pretty mm -hmm. um so anyway so like somebody from like a shop in toronto i think had shown like a couple ones that they had made or somebody had made for shop samples and they had done one in black and gray and i was like oh yeah that looks really it looks really sharp like yeah yeah. Anyway, the pattern is by, again, if you don't already know, it's by um, Carissa Knits. So, uh, Carissa. Carissa. I thought you said Harissa. I'm like, Carissa. Yeah. Oh, Carissa Browning. That's it. And her, her website is carissanits.com. So, there, you, there's an option to make a wee wrap or a wondrous wrap, and I'm making the wondrous wrap because I have enough yarn yeah. to do it. Oh. Pardon? I said, do you have enough yarn? Because I didn't Yeah, when I looked at it. Yeah, initially when I started it, I started, I wasn't really paying attention to the fact that there's two sizes, so I started it with the wee, yeah. and, uh, and then I realized, oh yes, those numbers and brackets are trying to tell you something. Like, I was just in a hurry to get started, you know? So I was yeah. ignoring that, the details. Yeah. So I had to start it again. It wasn't, not by much, but... Yeah. yeah, I feel like this worked out for the best though, because originally I was going to make it for you just because I think you were thinking you didn't really have the maybe knitting experience to tackle a wrap like that. But I feel like now you totally do. Like there's no reason yeah. that you can't. That's not a big deal. It's the only the only technical thing is the short rows, and it's not that big of like or yeah, the short rows. So doing the wrap and turns. Um, yeah. So it's like it's. Uh, if you know I do uh, wrap and turns, it's like basic, but I do find like, even though it's just garter stitch, you do have to pay attention because at some points you have like five um, stitch yeah. markers on at, at a point and you've got like, you know, increases and decreases and wrap and turns and whatever mm -hmm. to make the shaping of it. Mm -hmm. um, and I've got my Riv Creative Wonder Woman stitch markers on, of course. Um, okay, two more things. Well, we need to get going. Oh my goodness. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay, so camping knits. One thing I'm thinking about bringing is at the same, no, yeah, I guess at the same time that I ordered that mini skein for you um, from Mustache Yarns, I already had, so last year they did this like camping 
themed thing where she made a colorway and there was like a mug and like, I don't know, some other accessories and stuff. You could buy like a whole kit or just buy the yarn. And I think she came out with a pattern anyways. So I got this camping themed, I can't remember exactly what it's called. And oh, there it is. Campfire. <laughs> <Good. Cool. laughs> Sounded like you were getting attacked by something. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Uh, the camp knit along is what it was. That's cute. And, oh, really cute label. Yeah, it was cute. And the colorway is called Campfire. I think it's there somewhere. Um, oh, hold it upside down. I was like, I can't read it backwards on the screen. I'm like, because it's backwards and upside down. Um, so yeah, Campfire colorway. So it's like the bark colorway, the canopy. So like there's brown stripe, a green stripe, and then like a multicolor stripe. And it's. Um, dyed in two matching skeins so these are each 50 grams and then when she was getting rid of all these mill ends like seriously she had like all these colorways and I had so much stuff in my cart and I was like I don't need all this stuff I need to take it out so the only thing that I really wanted to get was more of this so this is not a complete skein I think it works out to be like 89 grams altogether or something like that but I so. also in two because I wasn't sure if it was just all together as one skein or step like measured out. They're in two matching size skeins. So I'll put like a 50 gram skein and then it's like a 45 gram skein basically with each other. So I'll have like two um, leg warmers. And I found this really cool stitch pattern that looks kind of like match sticks that I kind of want to do going up the leg. So we'll see. I don't know if that's like going to be the greatest project to bring camping because I've never worked this stitch pattern before, so I don't know how much paying attention it will require. It has like um, either slip stitches or like cross stitches, and then it also has like bobbles. I don't know. We'll see. Um, but that's one thing. And then what else did I pull out? Oh, I pulled out. I had got this too way back uh, at Christmas. Um, I had bought two skeins of this road trip colorway when Hugh Loco was getting rid of or did like a big Christmas update or Boxing Day update or whatever with um, one of a kind colorways and like limited runs and stuff. So I was thinking about casting on like maybe a simple shawl or something like that with this, but we'll see. Um, because I just like, then I cast it on this. So now I'm like, I don't know, my whole plan's going out the window, but we'll see. All the yarn will get used someday. And then I had to show this bag that I had gotten a, quite a while ago from Knit Picks to put my camping themed projects in. And I was like so obsessed with myself. It's so cute. Um, and it's just like a simple drawstring, like linen-y kind of bag, but I just love that it's like camping themed. And, uh, and then acquisitions. Do you have any acquisitions? You've been good? I uh, not so much. <laughs> no, that's not true. I did get something. I did have to get um, more of this yarn for my friend's socks, for Mister Socks. Oh, right. Um, so I got uh, another skein of that, and then I think I also got uh, <clears throat> something I thought I was going to hold double with the driftwood to do the uh, Erika Erika. I'm not sure what it's supposed to be called. It's A R I K A. Arika, Erica. Uh, I call it Erica, but then sometimes, yeah, Arika slips out. Uh, but I don't think I'm gonna when I put them together. And I, you had already said about that new design. I was like, oh yeah, that would be good for the driftwood. I called them together anyway. The color was awful. <laughs> so yeah, okay. nothing major. Yeah. Um, Go ahead. So I I don't really recall say order of arrival. Not that it really matters to anyone else. But, um, okay, so one thing, because I'm so excited about this, but again, it's like things that I want to cast on, but that are not appropriate for camping. I'm not going to take it out of the package because it's very crinkly. Um, Spin Cycle came out with their new worsted weight yarn that they're treating, they're kind of, uh, what do you call it, like plying or spinning or whatever, the same as they're dyed in the wool. So where the colors transition, but they have this like marl effect. So I just got two skeins um, in this colorway that I've been wanting for so long. And every time I try to get it in the dyed in the wool line, the sport weight line, I, I miss it. It's like sold out wherever I'm looking. It's called Never You Weary. I just like, like my birthday's in January and it makes me think of January that like right. someone was asking you like, 
hey, when can we get together again? Um, how about never you wear? Gotcha. Um, anyways, and it's like totally my colors, like purples and a little teal and a little pink and whatever. So what I'm thinking about for this is I have this yarn that I bought from Northbound Knitting quite a while ago. I think she had a sale in her shop and I just happened to see it and was like, yeah, that'd be good to like stash away for a sweater down the road. So it's called Rustic Sport, but I would say it's actually more like a DK to a worsted weight. So I feel like it's going to be a really good match with this. Um, the colorway she labeled as sterling. It's 113 grams per skein, 272 yards, and says it's 100% Canadian wool. It's pretty rustic. It's kind of scratchy. Um, but what I want to do is like a raglan top and, or like a, like a cardigan, but like do the raglan increases. I might kind of use my t-shirt pattern and kind of hack that into a cardigan, um, but striping these to get these two together for the top section. And then it'll just be like plain gray at the bottom section. So we'll see how that goes. I got three of these. So hopefully the two together, it'll work out. Um, and then what? Oh, and then Koigu had a sale where they were getting rid of like a bunch of one of a kind colorways. And you know how I feel about one of a kind. So I got two um, lace weight skeins of this. The colorways don't have names. They all just have like numbers. So if that's helpful information to you, this one is called L9381. Pretty. <laughs> so it's just lace weight merino. So it's very similar to like Koi Goo's, like say KPPPM um, or KPPM. Um, in that it has that plied kind of ropey look to the strands, but just lighter weight. Um, so I got two of those and it's like, I would describe the color kind of like navy, a little bit of gray, a little bit of brown, and then this mustard color. But I feel like the brown is like the navy and the mustard kind of overlapping each other. So it's just really nice, like tonal, dark, moody kind of color. Um, and so I'm not sure exactly what I'm going to do with that. I kind of want to do like a big cowly kind of something, but we'll see. And then also from that sale, I had gotten three of this colorway. It's like weird peachy color that has like navy speckles and a little bit of pink speckles and stuff. Camera's blowing it out. It's much more peachy in real life. And then this colorway that's like in real life, that's like a terrible skein. The, the three skeins are very different from each other, even though you can see that they have the same colors, but it's like bluey, per periwinkly, but then with speckles of like blues and teals. So I was kind of thinking about, I might do something with them together. I don't know. So I got three of this one and three of this one. And because they're 50 gram skeins, they're smaller than some places. And then the only other thing was, oh no, a couple other things, because it's been a couple weeks. I forgot. Never showed you this. <laughs> Things are happening. Can you see it? Night knits. Oh yeah. Night knits. Oh, night knitter. That's from uh, Twill and Print. Yes. For badge. She came out with new pins that are meant to look kind of like badges, like girl guide badges. And I was like, oh my God. I've always been like, it sounds so dorky, but I've always been kind of secretly jealous. I have like awesome badge collections because we never did girl guides. And I just like, they look so cool. So I had to get the night knitter one because that's 100% me staying up way too late to knit. And then I also, I can't remember what this one was called. I have to look it up again. I want to say it's called like Swift Stitches or something like that. So it's about like being a speedy mm. knitter. And I feel like my, my knit speed has gotten up a lot in the last year or so. So I was like, yeah, this one as well. And then I also got these. I'm really glad that she was stocking them. They're like screw on backs for your enamel pins because she has the rubbery backs on hers, which I feel like stay on pretty well. But some people have like just that little clip on back and then they like sometimes they catch on stuff and they come off. Even the rubbery backs I find sometimes come off. So these... I'm really excited about, um, I have a couple pins that I feel like are just extra special to me, like that night knitter one. I want to put at least one of these like little screw on back. So she has these that you can just buy separately. And then 
uh, Riv Creative restocked her shop. So one of the things I got was this little sodalite pendant. Came on the chain. And I've been wanting some sodalite for a while, so I was happy to get that. And then one thing that I really, really wanted, because I think I showed last time how I had started trying to make some socks with my Mischief Managed colorway from um, Nomadic Yarns. So then I saw this in the Riv Creative shop and I was like, yeah, I have to get this. So I'm like, I'm gonna, it's re-energized me to try to make something with those socks. I don't know why I was having trouble figuring them out, um, but to use that on my socks. And then Sarah always gives me a little something because she's sweet like that. And I've been eyeing this one for a while and was like, I don't know if I should get it because I don't know if it'll be too heavy. It's actually quite light. Like just because the size, I thought, oh, it's going to pull. And I hate that when you have like a progress keeper and it's like pulling the stitches. Um, so so it's like an origami cool. dove? Yeah, a little origami crane. Crane, yeah. I would say crane. I got doves in the brain now. <laughs> so there's that. And it should be an origami, origami Dave. Origami <laughs> Dave. <laughs> Um, and then, uh, what's her shop called? So her shop is Yarnistry. She's in the UK and she makes these little like laser cut stitch markers and lots of different stuff. She has like sock blockers and stuff, but all like laser cut out of this like acrylic sheet stuff. Um, so that looks like a little sock if you can see that there. Mm -hmm. like sparkle on the front. Anyway, so she had these like mystery sets that she was selling. And one thing in the mystery sets was some of them would contain like a golden beaver stitch marker. And so if you got the golden beaver, you won like an additional prize. So I can't remember what she calls it, Saturday Night Beaver or something like that, which like I, any, any, for some reason, anything with beaver. I don't know if it's like partially because being Canadian and because beaver, um, it's just anything like with that, like it just cracks me up. So it was like on the Saturday she put all the like mystery sets into little things in like a gumball machine. And so it was like, she would call out. So she would message you your number. So you bought your sets, however many you wanted. So I had bought a couple. She messages you your number. And then she goes through like from one to however many and like takes them out of the gumball machine, pops them open live on Instagram so that you could see if you won a golden beaver and then you could whatever, find out your prize, I guess. I didn't get a golden beaver, um, but some of them actually had beaver stitch markers in them. I was really hoping like at least a couple of my sets would have them in, but only one had them in. So can you see like that's his mouth in the middle and then his little eyes. Maybe if you see it in person, it'd be easier. Honestly, it looks like the Jason mask. See, it's like in the middle of like where it comes to a point, that's his teeth and then his nose is above that and then the eyes are kind of like up here. Mm -hmm. Anyways, whatever. You know, like those pictures where it's like two pictures in one and when yeah. you like see one picture, that's all you can see. If yeah. All I can see is like the middle part that's white looks like a freaky mask to me. <laughs> I can't see. I can see the ears, but I can't like put them all together. Dinosaur. Mm -hmm. Stegosaurus is my favorite dinosaur. Would you like some a stegosaurus or two? Yes. There's a couple of them. Um, I think she had these from like some kind of, I don't know, these were part of a special set that she did. It's actually wood, it's like a little TV. I think they were from, I think she might've done a set that was like Big Bang Theory or something like that, but I'm, I can't remember for sure. Um, it wasn't something that I was like interested in at the time, so I don't remember. Anyway, so I got a few stegosauruses, a couple socks, couple of shapes. I have other stitch markers from her too and I just love them. I think they're so cute. And I like that she put them a lot of them on the bulb pins because then it just makes them a little bit easier to use. You oh, can okay. use them as a stitch marker, like a proper stitch marker or a progress keeper as well. Um, that said I might switch some of them to rings and just make them just stitch markers because I have some from her already that are on rings that I like uh, quite a bit. Because that that plastic's nice and light. Anyways, I think that's it. Well it was nice to see y'all again this week. Yeah. We'll see you again until after our wonderful camping trip. Mm -hmm. And hopefully I get lots of knitting in there in the next two weeks. Mm hmm Yeah. Thanks, Jocelyn, for finishing your... Mm hmm I finally remembered to go and actually check out their podcast, and I think I left her a comment saying 
that, I, that was cute. Mm -hmm. I saw it on Instagram finally. Yeah, it's cute. It's really comfy. Like I don't, it's like sometimes when I see them on some people, I'm like, they don't like granny square stuff sometimes looks a little bit stiff to me, like depending on like the gauge, but hers looks so like soft and comfortable not comfortable temperature wise for this time of year, but wow. comfortable, comfortable to actually wear fabric wise. So who would have known how hot it would have gotten so quickly <laughs> everywhere in Canada this year. And well, yarn on people. Yarn on. Bye. Bye.